Hello everyone, how are you? How are you, how are you, how are you? This is the Taryn Lamp Show, episode number 89. 80, 80, 89. Hi Weldon, how are you? Um, this is the Taryn Lamp Show, episode number 89. Thank you so much for joining me. We are here every Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. 5.30 p.m. for my folks on the Pacific Coast time and 8.30 p.m. for my friends on East Coast. So we are here. This show is about positivity. It's about love. It's about connecting people. So if you have a story, and I know you do, please make sure you get in contact with me. I would love to have you here on the show. If you know someone who has a story, I would love to have them on the show. So hook it up, you can DM me, you can message me, you can text message me, all that good stuff, however you wanna get in contact with me. But we are looking for guests for the latter half of 2022. So I would like for you to be on the show. I know you know someone who would like to be on the show or should be on the show. So please make sure you get in contact with me. I would love to have them on the show. So we are gonna get started, but before I get started, I am going to put my cash app in the comments here and for those who may watch the show regularly my cash app we have now started to give back so if you feel so inclined it's a total in-kind donation it's not official 501c3 it's not anything fancy it's good old-fashioned me I take what I get from the cash app from the show and I go and I pay off or pay a portion of a cancer patient or heart disease patients bill. So that is, I actually did a post on a few posts ago about a patient we were able to pay off a bill for her and that all came from the gifts and the kindness of this show. It's not an official, like I said, 501c3. It's just a love, kindness, um, you know, trust tree, whatever you want to call it. Good old fashioned Taryn that goes in and takes that money directly to a patient in need. So that is my cash app. If you'd like to give to that, please put survivor in the comments. And again, I just, you know, at some random moment in the future, just see how much we've uh, raised. And I take that and I go pay either towards a patient's bill or pay off a bill, depending on who is in need at that time. So again, that's my cash app. <clears throat> excuse me, for that. So this is episode number 89. I'm so glad you're here. I'm waiting for my guests to come in. I'm so glad you're here today. Make sure you're checking out some of the prior episodes. Make sure you're sharing the show. Make sure you're subscribing on YouTube. You can listen at any time on YouTube, or you can also listen uh, on my IGTV. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about, IGTV. Or you can listen on Apple Podcasts. So Apple Podcast, my YouTube channel, or IGTV. So the show is on all three of those platforms as we speak. And like I was saying, we are here every Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on IG Live with the guests. We're going to start having some upcoming episodes, maybe at, uh, bonus episodes, I think I'm going to call them, at different times um, for some different guests that, that are international. So I'm excited about that here in the, the later part of 20. Can you believe I'm saying the later part of 2022? Like already? That's crazy town, right? Um, so yeah, let's see if I have any other announcements. Yeah, if you didn't get a chance to check out. <clears throat> oh, okay, great. I see you, Karima. Karima. I hope I'm saying that right, Karima. Am I saying that right, Karima? I hope I'm saying that right. Um, so I, yeah, oh yeah, if you get a chance, check out prior, the prior, um, a prior post ago where I did talk about we were able to pay off uh, someone's bill. So again, so thankful for that. I am going to invite my guest in right now. Right now. This means, but we're gonna try it. It's saying something on my IG, all right. Let's see. Let's see. Did it go? Hello, hello, hello. Let's see. Did it work? Karima, I requested you in. I hope that it worked. No, it didn't work. Yes, now it worked. Let's see. Tell me if it's if you're getting it on the other side or if you're just going to appear beautifully on the screen. Hello, Lisa. I saw you joined. 
so Karima, I requested you in. Did it come through? Did it come through for you? If, if it didn't come through for you, you might need to hit on your end request to join because I think I've requested you in. It's not, it's, um, I'm inviting you in. So maybe try to request from your side because I, I keep going back to it and then it doesn't, uh, it, it's not, it's, it's not highlighted. So let's see what's going on. Okay, try to request, yeah. Is that coming through on your end? You don't see that I'm requesting? Let's see. <clears throat> so anyway, so my cash app is there. Like I said, please put Survivor in the comments. It is again, and not an official 501c3. It's good old fashioned Taryn, some good old fashioned love, helping somebody, helping a patient in need. So you put Survivor in the comments, everything that's raised through that cash app with survivor in the comments is going to help pay off a bill for a cancer or heart disease patient in need. Let's see. Karima, are you seeing it? Da! There you are. Hi there. Am I saying it right, Karima? Yes, you are. You Perfect. See? How are you? I am doing well with technical issues on this end, but I got in. Had to use my phone, but I got in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm using my phone. Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So we. So Lisa's on. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> I know. I saw her. I saw her log on. She's she's listening. So thank you guys so much for joining us again. This is the Taryn Lamb Show, episode number eighty nine, and we have. Now I put in the tag like we're gonna get some business. I I I broke out the pen because I'm <laughs> ready because I'm ready to learn about this. So tell us a little bit. I want you to tell us a little bit how you got there, but then I kind of changed it up because I'm thinking to myself, I kind of want to make this learning because when when we were talking the other day, you were kind of sharing some statistics with me about you know how you've grown and how people have gotten you know, their career changes and different things like that. So I want to hear about that. And I want to hear some, you know, some, some goodness because I'm ready to learn because I was thinking about my own self and how I need you in my life. So tell us a little okay. bit about out there and what you do. Perfect. Well, look, first off, thanks again for having me on your show. Definitely excited to be here. So my name is Karima and I am the the person behind the pen of uh, KC Consulting. So in terms of a little bit about me and my business, I am a professional career pivoter um, who just so happens to have a degree in journalism and mass communications. So because I have navigated my own career in multiple directions, um, I've started to help people do the same um, by way of my business. So when the pandemic started, I mean, you had people that were, you know, looking to do something different. You had people who had to do something different. And I was finally in a position where I had to sit still long enough and I could actually extend my reach. You know, I, I wasn't out and about. I wasn't, you know, all over the place. I was home and, you know, luckily able to connect with a lot of people. Um, and I like to think that, you know, when it comes to the clients that I connect with, you know, I help people who are looking to start new businesses. I mean, it could be, hey, you know, I left that nine to five and I'm looking to do something different and I don't know what to write on my website. I don't know what to put on social media. Um, I don't know how to talk about myself. I don't know, you know, I don't know yeah. anything about branding. So that's kind of where a lot of my copywriting services come into play. Um, my primary service offering um, is resume writing. And it's unbelievable, really, how, how much that has grown in just two years um, to get feedback from clients that in just two years, I think over $1.3 million in total compensation increases for my clients like that's insane like I, I was looking at the numbers and I'm like hold on is the math right let me add this up again like you know did I miss something did I count something twice right. no 
came up with the, you know, the same numbers. And that just goes to show, um, you know, just how many opportunities are out there, you know, by way of promotions, by way of career pivots, by way of, hey, I, I'm just looking to do something different. Um, I need to provide a better means for my family, for myself, et cetera. I hope people do all of those things. So, t so this is a question and I, you know, again, I, I, I said to my, I had all those like little five things that I sent to you. And then I said, you know what, I got some questions of my own. So <laughs> copywriting, I'm just, when I think of copywriting, I think of like, you can say this, you can't say that. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's copywriting, but tell me what that is. So the, yeah, so people in your autumn. Yeah, people automatically think about the copywriting, you know, spelling the end of it, you know, R-I-G-H-T-I-N-G. And by that, it is, you know, the trademarks, the protections, you know, that's what that piece of copywriting is. I'm the copywriting by way of, you know, advertising for said products, you know, services through words and, you know, creativity, uh -huh. innovation, that's that type of copywriting it's essentially you know, content creation that is so okay because i mean i'm look. i'm thinking about even what i tagged you and i'm like did i spell it right because i did not know that i mean look look tr uh, here I, I i did not know that i did not know um you know there was a diff I, first of all i clearly didn't know there was a difference in spelling um and i didn't know there was a difference in what that meant for a service mm -hmm. so i mean I, I, I wanted to ask you because I would just think, do this, do that. You know what I mean? That's what I think. But you're basically thinking the text, like you said, to, mm -hmm. to brand yourself, if you will. Yes. What does yes. that look like for, your, for yourself or for your business? So really for, um, you know, for my business, I just had to start. Like, luckily, mm -hmm. I, had, um, I had a really great friend. Shout out to Serena of Aniris Photography. She really pushed me in the right direction just to get started and that I could you know I could figure it out as I went along and she really taught me the importance of branding and through me kind of going through that myself I can relay that to my clients it's like I'm on this journey I'm mm -hmm. you know I'm growing my brand I'm growing my business and I'm helping people to do the same things um, you know people think that there's some you know secret sauce or like, hey, I need all these things to get started. No, you need to start. Um, yeah. If you're willing to learn, if you're really willing to be, you know, receptive and take feedback, you can absolutely grow because that's what I've been doing. Yeah, I think that's key. How did you know that you wanted to, okay, let me go back to the questions I sent you because I'm off, I'm on way out of <laughs> Um. Okay, so we got your journey. Now, what are some things that, you know, maybe obstacles that came in your way? Because, you know, this, I, to me, this is um, unique, mm -hmm. right? And I think that it's a service that I think is so needed. But how did you kind of, you know, get some of, through some of those obstacles to say, yeah, this is, this is what, where I want to be? You know, because I'm sure, like I said, with it being unique, mm -hmm. I'm sure, like you said, I love the career pivoter thing. You know, you're pivoting here, pivoting there. What are some of the obstacles that maybe stood in your way kind of getting this started? And I like that one of them was just starting. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I did this for years without even thinking about mm -hmm. doing it. And it's really just by way of when I finished college and I did my initial career pivot before I even knew what a career pivot was, um, I tried something different. I networked and I landed a great opportunity, but I knew, I knew that I needed to, I, I knew that I needed to try something different mm -hmm. because I was kind of stuck in that rut of, Hey, you know, if you keep your head down for five years, maybe you can try something different then mm -hmm. who's keeping their head down for five years. Like, why can't I grow and be where I want to be in five years, not wait until five years to get there. Mm -hmm. So um, I knew even then that I needed to, you know, try something different. I needed to rebrand myself uh, because me having that journalism and mass communications degree, but I started out in project management, you know, what does that look like? I need to 
you know, automatically update my resume, you know, because I'm, I'm starting something different. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, going from there, going back to school, trying, you know, trying new things, being open minded to, to going in different directions with my career. It's like, oh, so now I've landed myself in cybersecurity. So now my resume needs to look different again. Um, and now I need to figure out those transferable skills that I have leveraged from journalism degree to project management mm -hmm. to cybersecurity and make sure to articulate those things in my resume. And so when people start to see like, well, how did you, go, how did you get a job in IT? How did you get a job in cybersecurity? I'm like, transferable skills, rebranding yeah. myself, networking, you know, so it's just, it's all these things that started getting a lot of questions and people were like, hey, you know, can you help me with this? So I did this so like so many times just over the years with, without even thinking about it. And so I finally, you know, the more I thought about it and the more requests I got for it, I was like, you know, I think maybe this, maybe this is something that I want to you know, do more of, or maybe this is the business that I've been running from starting. Um, and like I mentioned, the, the pandemic just kind of gave me the, you know, time in the house to really figure things out and how to get started and how to really, I guess, kind of plan for what I needed to do, dedicate the time for it. And it is very unique because people don't necessarily think that they need to outsource resume writing mm -hmm. or that they need to hire a resume writer but sometimes you absolutely do if you have been updating the same resume that you've had for 10 15 years guess what you've never rebranded yourself you mm -hmm. probably are not advocating very well for yourself you're probably not really articulating the value that you bring because the resume that got you here is not going to be the resume that gets you there and i have to remind people of that a lot and it's like, you know, it's almost like it's an aha moment. Like a lot of people just do not realize that like, hey, like maybe I should listen to, you know, this resume writer, or maybe I should hire her to at least look at my resume, you know, give me feedback on my resume. Oh, you can't see that. But that says, <laughs> are you articulating the value of your brand? I like that. Mm -hmm. I wrote that down because that's, that's, a, that's a good question when you, in anything, but particularly when you're writing your resume or when you're putting yourself out there, right? Are yeah. you articulating the value of your brand? Right. Uh, there are so many times where I think that I see people who are mid-career, senior career, and their resume reads very entry level. And that's a hard conversation to have with someone, but mm -hmm. when they see the difference that it brings, and when they see definitely the the offer difference, you know, when they start going for these positions or realizing like, hey, I have the skills, why am I not getting the interviews or why yeah. am I not getting through the system? And it's like, I give them the feedback, you know, they hire me for the service, they get their resume done, and then they come back to me with these amazing success stories. And it's it's the things that you just don't even realize because yeah, you just don't have a lot of people talking about this. You have more of the conversations happening now, but um, yeah, it's not something that you really hear a lot of in college. It's not something you hear a lot of in your professional circles, but you should. We should all be talking about how to, you know, how to make sure that our professional brands are strong and, you know, that we are consistently, you know, managing them like we manage our money, like we manage everything else. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I always get interested in, in talking about your, um, you know, our, meaning us, um, pers our personal brand. So, so guys, if you're just joining, this is the Taryn Lamb Show, episode number 89. Make sure you're liking, following, subscribing, all that good stuff. We are talking to Karima today about, we just started talking about resume writing. We're talking about copywriting. We're talking, we're getting down to business. We're figuring it is out what it is that we can do to, I wrote down this question, are you articulating the value of your brand? So that's gonna be my question I'm gonna be asking myself because that's, because I like that question and I need to know, am I articulating the value of my brand? And I also realized, and so real quick, um, Lisa says, the resume that got you here is not going to be the one that takes you there. 
That is it. That's a key one. Um, and it's one that a lot of people don't realize, you know, mm -hmm. it, like I, when I tell you how many times I have rebranded my resume, I'm not attached to what I started out with. Mm -hmm. I'm not even attached to the resume that I updated last week. You know, if I feel like I need to rebrand myself again, I'm going to do it. Yeah, that's good too, because I, I, I feel like, yeah, I, I might be a little attached to my resume. Mm -hmm. I, guilty, guilty is charged, you know? Mm -hmm. I did update something uh, this year that someone showed me. They, I don't know if it was, I don't know if you call it a resume. It was more like a, I don't know what you call it. Um, there is a word for it and I forgot what it is now, but it has my picture on it, which my resume doesn't have my picture on it, but this has mm -hmm. my picture on it. More like a profile card or a, okay. you know. Yeah, like a career profile. Yeah, thing that, that I really liked. And that was kind of my out of the box where I put some of my different things on it that I, that I liked. But I feel like one thing that it took me a while to understand is that, and it sounds simple, is that I am my brand. And so there's things that Taryn may have on her resume that need to, like you say, articulate Taryn. As a, you know what I mean? My uniqueness, mm -hmm. which I feel like some of the, maybe the strength finders type things or something like that. But I, you know, I'm, I'm learning how to be my brand, but that's, you know, we'll have, an, maybe we'll have a class <laughs> with you. <laughs> but I just think it's, to your point, it's unique and it's interesting, you know, what we need to learn in that space. Oh, yeah. right. Did Absolutely. you know for a while that you were good at it? Um, I... I did, um, but it was really, I think I did more resumes than I realized that the people were actually like on to these, you know, other careers or that they had like, yeah, I've been promoted twice since then, or hey, I've relocated. So I didn't even know about as many of the success stories out there until, you know, you find someone on social media or you reconnect on social media. I was mm -hmm. like, wait a minute, like... What happened? Like I like I helped them with their resume. What you know, yeah. let me you know, let me reconnect, see where they are, what they're doing. So yeah, it, I, like I said, I wasn't even thinking about it. You know, if someone yeah. reached out for help, I, you know, I offered my assistance, I offered my feedback, you know, some people, you know, kinda trust me to just, you know, hey, rewrite this. And then other people were like, Yes, yeah, so I'll take the feedback and, you know. I'll make it my own or I can figure things out because again, I, I understand some people are very connected to um, their resumes and certain things. But again, it's like, sometimes you have to be receptive to the feedback, like, okay, it's, you know, or maybe, maybe you need different versions of your resume. Maybe this is too much. Maybe this isn't saying enough. Okay. Um, Cause I know I have to be open to that feedback too. Like, um, like what like are you sure are you serious yeah. and you know some of it I'm like okay thank you but I don't think that really applies to me okay. um so yeah I how do you how do you feel like you're building community I mean I'm, I'm assuming there's a circle of you know I would I would think it's more of a work community but maybe you can tell me you know how are you how do you feel like you're building you know community with what you do so um, I am a part of a group um, called the Society of Elite um, Resume Writers. And just the amount of information that I have gained over the past like year, year and a half has been like, I never knew because you only know your approach. You only know the way that you've been handling things. So I've learned so much about, hey, like, I never even considered that. Or like, hey, I think I'm underselling myself. Or you've been in business for how long? And, you know, how are you doing this? And so, um, you know, even just me being, you know, the student and being receptive and taking all the information in that I can, you know, turn around and provide to my client. So that's kind of one way that I've been, um, I guess, kind of building community and uh, yeah. probably by way of my my friends, my professional circle, they know that I'm always the one that's like, um, and this is probably because someone did it to me. Uh, I think she's on here named Lisa. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, but, what did she do? Who knows? Right. 
Look, first it started with LinkedIn. I think it's she. I mean, she stayed on me. Like, why are you not on LinkedIn? You know, you're not. You're not posting this. You're not. You know, you're not selling yourself. You're not. You know, you're not connecting. You're not networking. So it was like a missed opportunity. So I was like, okay, Lisa, I got it. So finally, I got on there, and now. I don't know how many conversations I have to have about LinkedIn on a weekly basis and just like, hey, here are the strategies that you need to use to increase your engagement, to increase your visibility, because just having a LinkedIn profile doesn't mean anything. Like you have to know what you're doing and how to use it and what's your goal even for being on there. Um, so I think I'm building community by, you know, starting to educate people about like hey like this is how like if you're trying to get to this level i yeah. think this is what you 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 should try this or are you trying this just really you know i i ask questions i offer feedback um i offer my you know services if they are needed but i think it's really just by way of you know if i see someone that's you know they're not happy they're complaining about you know whether it's like hey i want a promotion i need a new job I need better balance in my life. I need more, you know, more time with my family. It's like, okay, well, let's look at doing yeah. something different. So I think I build community by, you know, really creating those genuine connections where I can help or be of, you know, be helpful, be a good resource or, you know, like I mentioned, if they yeah. hire me for my services, you know, that's a added bonus on top. But I'm not, you know, I love helping people. But I don't just, I'm not a like, hey, I'm, I'm taking on every project. I'm taking on every resume. Not everyone needs me. Not everyone mm -hmm. needs a complete revamp or rebrand. Some people just need like, hey, this is a great format. This is great content. But let's use different terminology. Let's try this. Let's do that. And it could just be, you know, by way of me providing a critique um, mm -hmm. or some feedback, but not necessarily doing a whole rewrite. Do you have to have a goal of your next job to make your resume? No, you do not. You have to, so I, I have a lot of people that come to me and they have that, you know, um, and this, this is pretty common with teachers. Um, teachers that are looking to get out of the classroom or to do something different, but they don't know what that different is because they've <laughs> only known teaching. So I have to almost kind of go through, you know, a couple of coaching sessions about, um, you know, transferable skills and what their transferable skills will be, you know, good opportunities to, you know, like, hey, have you thought about this career? Have you thought about that career? Um, so not everyone who comes to me has that end goal in mind, but sometimes it's by way of, you know, hey, let's talk about the things that you're great at. Let's talk about the things that you're passionate about. Um, and that can kind of help to narrow down some opportunities. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because we think, because I think about that and I'm like, you know, do people need to know where they're going first or, or no? You know, sometimes they just know where they're not going, I guess. Yeah. And, and sometimes, honestly, it's, it's after the coaching session that <laughs> they're like, you know, like this is a clearer picture or I know what I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this narrows down, you know, some things for me. So what does the future hold? We got like one minute and 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so the future holds, I think because I have experienced, um, you know, so much success and really being able to reach way more people than I ever thought in two years, mm -hmm. I, I have to build a team. Um, I, I need more than, than just myself, you know, on this side of things. So just figuring out what that team will look like. Um, you know, really developing that team, coaching that team, and um, continuing to grow Casey Consulting. Uh, but that is, that's at least what the future will look like. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So we are at almost our eight o'clock. Now we do this test, Karima, on every show. So we'll see. We will see. So this is the question. If you watch prior episodes, you will know. If you did not, you will not know. I am a cat lady. I just, I gotta admit it. And you know what they say about cats? Cats, curiosity. I'm a cat. So 
what are you curious about? Uh, what am I curious about? Um, Anything. Work. Look, for, look, four day work weeks. Um, um, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious about that. I need longer weekends. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good. But you know what? I've heard. I've heard statistics on those, and people actually say they're um, more effective or more efficient or whatever. Um, with in the with the four day work weeks and with people who get um, what do you call that unlimited vacation? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So th those things. I mean, they tend. I've heard things that say those things are actually make people more effective and efficient. I, you know. I don't have one, but <laughs> but um, I, I I'm curious to learn more about that too. I was actually it's funny you said that because I was talking about that today mm. with somebody. Very interesting. So guys, this is the Taryn Lamb show. I think we went one minute over, so apologize for that. Make sure you are liking, following, subscribing myself and Karima, and I want to have you back because I actually want to do uh, maybe a, a little short snippet on something like you know, we get to pick a topic, resume writing, copywriting, um, you know, something simple, because I feel like you have a lot of practicality to what you do mm. that, you know, people would enjoy, you know, listening and learning from, you, you know, but we can talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody, this is the Taryn Lamp Show, episode number 89. Again, make sure you're liking, following, subscribing, all that good stuff. That's my cash app. That cash app put survival in the comments. Anything that you give to the Cash App with Survivor in the comments is going to go to pay off a bill or a portion of the bill for a cancer or heart disease patient in need. We did get a chance to do that a few weeks ago. We were able to pay off a bill for a cancer patient, and I do that directly. It's no official 501c3. Uh, the full transparency, I just didn't want the... Uh, the whatever's attached to all that, I wanted to be able to go in directly from my heart and give to a patient in need. And that's what we did. We were able to pay off a bill for someone. And I also just put it out there, I'm very uh, compliant with it. So I follow all the privacy guidelines so I don't have patient names and things like that. What I do have is a contact in the cancer center where I go to. I ask them who's in need and that's who we help. Bam, done, gotta. Karima, thank you so much for your time. Everybody be good to yourself and each other, and we'll see you back here next week. Thank see you. you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.